Hello, it's August 29th. It's our Mattermost bi-weekly brain mind meld meeting about AI and all of our latest workings in it. I just want to open the floor to see if there's any conversations, topics, questions uh, that folks want to bring up at the top of the meeting. I don't have a lot of updates this week, but uh, I want to mention again that uh, the, I'm working on the timestamps for um, uh, me eating notes. It's it's. Uh, I think I mentioned last week that I was, uh, it, it's very good at hallucinating them. Uh, well, I've got it to not hallucinate. It's pretty, pretty consistently correct in the timestamps now. And uh, it pretty consistently actually puts them in there. So that's going to be a pretty cool feature. Um, I'm going to hopefully work on today doing another release so that uh, everyone can start playing with that. We can have timestamps for this, this meeting. I doubt this specific meeting will have the timestamps, but the next one. That one will have time stamps, hopefully. <laughs> Thanks. I have something. Um, I would. I am friends with a lot of the DevRel folks over at GitLab, and one of them recently made a tutorial about using AI to make a choose your own adventure game uh, to teach you how AI can be used to generate code and do sorts of things like that. And we're actually going to team up um, and transfer the game to be a Mattermost choose your own adventure game that's AI powered. So her and I are going to work to create a little dual tutorial together, just you know, a developer engagement experience to try out AI with both GitLab and Mattermost as open source tools. Let me know if there's any like features of the bot you guys like want for like I, I would imagine having some kind of like prompt. I've been thinking about having some kind of prompt library it would make a lot of sense for stuff like that. Um, for sure. We're going to brainstorm yeah. probably in about a, a few weeks from now um, when her schedule frees up and then we'll go from there and I'll tag you in it. That's good. Just, just a random comment, uh, Chris. Um, interesting, you know, when you mentioned uh, thinking about putting in some prompts as part of the capabilities of uh, of the AI plugin. Uh, recently, uh, maybe as recent as last week, I've heard something related to that where somebody wanted to be able to run a playbook where uh, there were a number of questions, a number of topics to be uh, uh, to be considered during the execution of the playbook, and they wanted uh, individuals to be able to access or push information via prompts. And I wonder perhaps that would be one of the use cases that could be addressed by this. And of course, what I mentioned is very general, it's very high level, um, but still, I mean, it, it picks my interest right away as you say that. So I'm gonna be keeping an eye on whatever comes out of this. Yeah, what, what exactly do you mean by accessing information via prompts in the playbook? You mean like they're, they're talking about like a prompts that are specific to this playbook? Yes, something that could be set up as part of a playbook itself. And the intent of a playbook is to solicit information from the participants. So as it is executing, certain uh, events and actions are happening. Um, things are being recorded as part of the conversations. And there would be a prompt, uh, a prompt that comes up to the user. And that in the way in which Andrew mentioned, kind of like choose your own adventure, helps you walk through the session trees or through what the next action should be or have AI suggest, you know, this is what you should do next, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, yeah, that definitely makes sense. And this is actually something that I heard from another party. So it's not exactly the use case that I, uh, that I discovered, but as I read quickly what one of our other uh, solution architects was saying, you know, it just piqued my interest. Uh, Chris, I have a question for you in regards to the plugin uh, with the bot. Is it able to understand the contents of files within what you ask it? Um, so if you upload a, like a PDF or a Word doc or, you know, just some kind of like text document and you ask it about it, can it tell you things from it? Um, not on the versions that are on community. I have that working locally. The problem I'm having with it is, so we actually have content extraction in Mattermost already. Um, mm -hmm. for Elasticsearch, right. but the PDF one is bad. Like, I haven't found a PDF that it actually works with. <laughs> like, mm. the, it, it's able to extract some text, but it doesn't make any sense, so the LLM has trouble parsing it, too. Um, so, probably, like, like obviously, if you have a text file, um, I, I need to get, like, a Word doc to test that. 
So like if you had a channel that had like a bunch of files in it and then you asked the AI to like summarize things based upon messages and file contents, that's something that we could be working towards. That's something that. Yeah, yeah. I I, I definitely want that to be um, cool. a thing. that Because I, I was thinking, of. I was thinking too, like in terms of open ops, because we want it to have data and we want it to be a, a demo environment. And part of the, obviously the obstacle that is getting people on there posting things. And the thing we've been doing is having Zapier bring stuff in, but Zapier itself is like going to stop supporting Twitter because of the Twitter changes to like how their API works. So we're going to lose all of our Twitter zaps and stuff. So I'm just like brainstorming ahead of time about what are some ways we can get some good actionable data that we can use for demos. And for examples, I'm thinking about like when I talk later in October as well, what's like a demo, what's like a data set that I could share that someone could go and practice on their own. And so I would, part of what I'm thinking at this point is having almost something like an Excel sheet or just like a chat log that I generate with AI or another tool. I tell it, these are five people. These are their five roles. These are what they talk about, you know, make up a chat log with this kind of format. And the idea would be that like, put that in Mattermost and then just ask questions against that. And maybe it's not displayed in a channel. Maybe it's not an organic conversation I'm pulling from, but it's still Mattermost data and something I could still be synthesizing from. And what, do, what do you think about that as an idea? I mean, I'm sure the I'm, I'm, LMs are excellent at making up conversation. So I don't think I have any problem having it make up a whole conversation. No, the, you. making up the conversations, <laughs> I think will be totally easy. But what do you think about extracting understanding from those conversations once um, I upload, like if I upload them as a file, as opposed to trying to post them in a bunch of channels? I'm just thinking about uh, getting the data onto OpenOps. Yeah, so there won't be any distinguishing between the file and the like actual chat log. Okay. Um, essentially, what happens is I process the chat into a file. I, I lay it all out. Oh, so like I'm just like skipping file. a step. Basically. So you're just essentially skipping a step. It if if you happen to follow the format that I exactly give it, it'll just think it's reading any old Mattermost chat log. So oh, okay. Well, then I'm going to get that format from you and I'm going to generate some logs and throw them in an open ops channel. And I'm going to try to synthesize a huge amount of data for us to talk about with AI uh, with that format, because it's easier than trying to manually post stuff as different accounts or set up automations. That's good. All right, I'll maybe bring up one other topic. Um, so in the Mattermost plugin AI, uh, Mattermost plugin dash AI, issue 19 is on my SQL support. So this has kind of um, gone back and forth a little bit. So Neil um, on our on our team internally at Mattermost. So, so the, the issue is that a lot of folks have deployed with MySQL and aren't able to use OpenOps. And um, until we get more concrete around the MySQL to Postgres migration, they're, they're not going to be able to use OpenOps. And um, so it's a timing thing. Like hopefully it should all be wrapped up soon. I think it'll be, the migration will be added to our documentation to get to Postgres. There is an issue that like a lot of our default installs, for example, on Bitnami and AWS are with MySQL, which doesn't support, um, which doesn't support the, the OpenOps. So we'll need to figure this out. This is probably more in the um, in Neil and Katie's bucket world, which is you know how do we default over to Postgres? But I think that um, in in OpenOps and, and the company in general, we're just we're just looking at you know doing more and more in Postgres and having one database versus multiple. I just wanted to check in. Is that feel? Is that my understanding of how you all are thinking about it? Yeah, essentially the yeah. reason why I didn't support MySQL because I was like. Well, I, I I don't need to. We're dropping it, so um, it it wouldn't be you know a, a huge ask to add it, but that would be continuous continuous support on the AI plugin that I just sort of like ah, it's brand new experimental. I don't really need to do this until you know that issue came up. Yeah, I, I think that's right. I think that like that what we found in in the server is that scaling MySQL is very difficult. Um, it's got a lot, it is it has idiosyncrasies that we don't really understand, and um, between Postgres and MySQL. So although it's easy to add in the early days, it like it's this kind of constant tax. You have to check both platforms. So by picking one, yeah. we can kind of move faster. I know there's a lot of MySQL fans out there. Um, and you know the whole lamp stack it, it's been this part of the internet for and, and technology for a long time um 
and it's it's uh at the same time you know postgres is just for for the things that we need um we, we i think we're just defaulting to postgres and and i think the most important thing is we're just transparent about it right there's just no planned support for mysql and we're just going to try and migrate folks over to postgres there's work to do in our defaults um but i think as long as we're open we can we can have folks opt in the other thing I didn't expect was I think when we announced open ops, it was like, hey, this is a sandbox, right? We know you haven't got trust and safety. We know that LLMs, like all this stuff needs time to catch up, right? Like all the, the sort of features, uh, it needs time. We didn't expect, I, I didn't expect as many people to start putting open ops into production um, as seems to, as what seems to be happening. So um, that's, that's going to take a little bit. And I think once we get the migration, you know, set up, it'll be even more. I think people are, are skipping the sandbox and they're just kind of going straight to production a lot of times, like limited rollout. And I think for them, a lot of that too is they need data. They need their own data. They got to test stuff on their their examples, their use cases, their people. It's kind of the same situ situation what we find ourselves in now. Yeah, exactly. That's why that's why I wanted it in community. It's like that's where all the data is. That's where I want to test it. Right? Just need to test it on stuff that you actually, you know working on the, like you can do all these test cases on like generic data but like it's not all in your head you're like oh that 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 that, that that's a great summary hey, except for you didn't just live through that meeting so it doesn't it's not all in your head so you don't you don't like have you know the like context to be like oh no that that that's wrong that that could be improved i'd rather have the summary like that so yeah, and um, and the open op stuff is it just tests really well in in our social content. So I did an experiment where I launched like three social posts at the same time. The White House had announced a open source security initiative. I did I did a I did a post social post on that with a link to the um, White House announcement. I did a little video on that. Video performs really well on the LinkedIn platform apparently. And then I took this random screenshot from from Christopher what you shared last week on timestamps. And the timestamp one is like performing probably 50% better than like the best performing open source content. So, um, and that was just like a very small feature. So <laughs> that's, that's the data. Um, is there anything that is there anything else that we should sort of showcase in the, in the change log or anything? I know you're working on timestamps, but anything that it's sort of like in the hopper, I know Jesus is like speaking at conferences this week, but, um, uh well I'm 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 gonna do a release so there'll be a change log on Thursday I can go through. Okay, great. So we'll do a change log and then we can uh that'd be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Oh, um, I'm gonna be in Geneva next week for uh the GovTech. There's a GovTech summit for the World Economic Forum that we got invited to. So I'll I'll see if we can time some some content with that. Be like, hey, I'm in Geneva. Here's some here's a change log <laughs> okay but we, we can work on it there, so the um, the world economic forum has a number of initiatives around um like the future of i should probably share some of this stuff it's public information right it's just like you know what is what is the, how do you think about public sector ai they actually have one um around that so i think that could be a good um a good conversation oh i think we're at time but we can talk about it more more next week, but let me let me just try to share some links. Uh, do, do, yeah, and I think I think now Zoom is keeping the context between um, conversations. So so Thursday we can talk a little bit more pu unlocking public sector AI. Sounds right. good. Thanks all. Talk to you soon. Bye.